18. The Ruler We have in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 3 following, the last formal and inspired words of King David. And we are told in verse 2 that this is an inspired statement. The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, The Rock of Israel spake to me, He that ruleth over men must be just. Ruling in the fear of the Lord, and he shall be as the light of the morning when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Although my house be not so with God, yet he hath made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things, and sure, for this is all my salvation and all my desire, though he make it not to grow. But the sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away, because they cannot be taken with hands. But the man that shall touch them must be fenced with iron and the staff of a spear, and they shall be utterly burned with fire in the same place. 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 2 to 7 When Cael and Dalich pointed out that 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 1, echoes Numbers chapter 24, verses 3 and 15, what Balaam as an outsider had predicted concerning the Messiah, now God's anointed king over Israel, confirms and expands. This not only shows to what extent David had occupied himself with the utterances of the earlier men of God concerning Israel's future, but indicates, at the same time, that his own prophetic utterance was intended to be a further expansion of Balaam's prophecy concerning the star out of Jacob and the scepter out of Israel. Like Balaam, he calls his prophecy a divine saying or oracle as a revelation which he had received directly from God. What David receives from God is a statement concerning God's ruler. The ruler over men, set forth by David's prophetic utterance, is, in terms of the echo of Balaam's prophecy, the Messiah. He is the star and scepter who shall destroy all the sons of tumult. Numbers chapter 24, verse 17. It is significant that the stress in both prophecies is on rule or rulership. This is an emphasis common to many of the messianic prophecies. The framework of his coming is the kingdom of God and the glorious reign of God's anointed. We can appreciate the meaning of this fact by recognizing that the fall of man was a messianic event. God created man to rule the earth in terms of God's righteousness, God's law, to exercise dominion under God. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 28. The Garden of Eden was a pilot project in that plan. Man was there to learn obedience and dominion under God. To apply it then to all the world wilderness. Man, however, chose another and independent Messiah, himself. Genesis chapter 3 verse 5 gives us that doctrine of independent rule. Now, Scripture is clear that all rule is from God. The powers that be in every area of life are ordained by Him. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 to 7. Whether it be the authority of civil powers, parents, church leaders, and masters in any and every realm, all rule is from God and is to be governed by His Word. Both ruler and ruled are under the law of God at all times. In no area of life can man make his own rules and laws. God is the Lord. Christ came as our Lord. The term Lord is the most common designation for Jesus in all of the New Testaments. It means he is the absolute owner and ruler over all things, in heaven and earth. Man wants his own rule, however, and hence the fall. Adam became his own Messiah. Wherever men seek to rule apart from God's law word, 
as their own saviors and messiahs, the result is injustice or unrighteousness. For man to determine good and evil means a triumph of the sons of tumult. Numbers chapter 24 verse 17 Man's messiahship is an attempt to play God. Thus, it is a quest for power, total power, not righteousness. Power divorced from God's law becomes progressively more evil. It becomes belial and confusion, and instead of a blessing, thorns. As such, power ceases to be dominion and becomes oppression. Dominion means the orderly life of all things under God and his kingdom. Where God's law is transgressed, we have oppression, not dominion. We have also the destruction of meaning. David's prophecy in verse 4 speaks of the naturalness of God's rule. Just as a good rain and a clear sun thereafter on a fertile field causes growth, so too does a just rule in terms of God's word cause man to flourish and abound. In other words, the more supernatural the rule, the more natural it is, that is, the more faithful it is to God's holy and righteous purpose, the more readily and naturally does it prosper. The false messiahship of man violates God's order and destroys direction and meaning in every area. It is not surprising that humanism has developed a philosophy of the absurd. Absurd, in this sense, means the antithesis of all meaning. It means that no sense can be made out of life, and that every attempt to gain meaning out of anything is a contradiction. No meaning exists in the universal meaninglessness. Siegel has noted, as a commentator on the absurd, on the futility of philosophy. Philosophy is the mind's chewing gum. There is a technique of classical logic called reductio ad absurdum, in which you elaborate the possibilities of a situation until it becomes self-evidently absurd. We now find ourselves at exactly that point, as the age of reason exhausts itself into the age of the absurd. Life, then, is absurd, and Siegel and Garfinkel chronicle the absurdities of life for 180 pages. A university course in prostitution at UCLA, a federal program funded by tax funds to teach rapists, the normal techniques of wooing women, a man in New Jersey who killed a savage Siberian husky owned by his neighbours and which was attacking his mother, was taken to court by the Bergen County Society for the prevention of cruelty to animals, and so on and on. Siegel and Garfinkel describe the official mind thus. It hates logic, simplicity, spontaneity, common sense and people as individuals. It loves power, regulations, duplication, complexity, titles, penalties and people as categories. Its philosophy, more is better, even if it's worse. Its program, there are no solutions. There are only bigger problems. In spite of all absurdities, men who deny the Lord will look to the state for salvation or else trust in their own absurdities. They prefer the most absurd rule of man to Christ's rule. The internal revenue service is better than God and his tithe. The result is, of course, judgment. These men who rule without faith, and all who put their hope or trust in them, are thorns, and thorns only. They are the sons of Belial, or worthlessness, and fit only to be destroyed. Their destination is the fire. David's trust is the ruler from God. Although his own dynasty was not so with God, that is, the holy and righteous order required by the Lord. Still God, in his grace, had made a covenant with the house of David, and through that line the Messiah would come. Meanwhile, all who rule must rule in terms of God's righteous word. 
dominion means rule in terms of God's kingdom and law. The Messiah is Jesus Christ, not the sons of Adam, Sheth, Numbers chapter 24, verse 17, or Belial, 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 6. David declares of the ruler from God that he is as the sun and as the light of the morning, 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 4. Jesus Christ declared that he himself is the light of the world and none other. Apart from him, men walk in the darkness of the absurd. John chapter 8, verse 12. 